happy Halloween! And yeah, this isn't the best makeup, but it was the best one that I could do with what I had. <laughs> but welcome to Battle Royale with Cheese, the website where you can get all of your TV and film news reviews and trailers. And yes, I have just come back from the cinema where they were showing a re-release of the original Saw film. I'm not going to do my typical review uh, format for this one. I'm just going to talk about it in terms of re-experiencing this and talking about how iconic this film is because by this point I feel like we all know what Saw is, what happens in it, how big the franchise has got now. It's still the biggest earning horror franchise ever and the, the roller coaster is still there at Thor Park. It's the first horror film themed roller coaster ever and yeah it was amazing to see it in cinema finally. I was about 12 or 13 when Saw originally came out in 2004 and so I wasn't able to see it because of UK certifications being different than American ones. I was unable to see it. So I experienced it for the first time in the cinema. It's a film I've seen a lot. It's actually my favourite horror film but I think seeing it on the big screen was definitely a different experience. And also, I haven't actually seen this particular one in a, in a while. Saw 6 and Spiral are the ones I actually go back to the most. So, re-watching the original one, I guess with a slightly open mind this time round, was actually very interesting, as well as it being in cinema. And it's still a fantastic film. I'm going to be honest, a lot of the problems I had with the film can also be given a bit of a pass. This was a very low budget horror film at the time, still is, and a lot of the scenes were either done in one take due to location restrictions or some scenes, for example, the flashes or the photographs that come up, that was there to pan out the time because they needed to extend the film, uh, the film's runtime due to festival rules. So a lot of this stuff, like, again, there's also halfway through the film, there's just flashbacks of what we've already seen so far in the film. And that's very obviously to pad out the time because they needed to, they needed to extend the film's runtime. And while with other films, I would see that as a flaw, with this, it, weirdly works because the whole film is very I guess much like the early saw traps it's very jankily put together but with a weird charm and love there's you can tell that the filmmakers James Wan and Lee Winnell they were very passionate about this project with this being their first one out of college at the time and it really really shows there's a lot of charm to this there's a lot of love that's been put into this as well as the amount of iconic imagery and shots like not just Billy the puppet like with the makeup not just with the pig head mask there's also just some truly amazing imagery there's a shot of Adam like from a low angle where he suddenly realized they're out of time that's an incredible shot and especially to see on the big screen the whole third act before it gets to the leg cutting is extremely stressful. It still does a really good job at creating tension and creating these really fast paced scenes where, yeah, I definitely felt quite stressed <laughs> watching it. Even though I knew what was gonna happen, I knew where it was going, it still holds up in terms of its tension and in terms of its scares and creepiness factor. Because of course, wouldn't be a sore film without the traps and these are a lot tamer when compared to the later entries it was a very interesting film to re-watch because I was coming from it after just having watched Saw X earlier in the day and that's a very interesting <laughs> interesting film to watch back to back where Saw X has these really brutal gory like really graphic scenes and this one's fairly tame in comparison. There is a few sort of gory moments, obviously the reverse bear trap, another iconic uh, prop and image. 
but that's also fairly gory and gruesome. The razor wire trap is also quite gory, especially with the close-ups of the victim's injuries at the end. But at the same time, I did come out of the cinema thinking that was fairly tame and fairly grounded and toned down compared to where it goes by now. But again, it all still really works. I could even give a bit of a pass on the acting as well. Carrie Ulles is still really, really good. And I know there are some moments where it can be seen as him sort of bringing in a bit of cheese to this. I still think it really works, especially his emotional moments. Crying and being in panic is not supposed to look pretty. And I think Saw actually does a really good job of showing a natural raw emotion, especially at the end. Lee Winnell's acting is fine for the most part. There's definitely some moments where it's a bit dodgy. There's definitely a moment, obviously, where he's purposely phoning it in, which got a laugh out of me. I knew it was coming, but it still got a laugh out of me. But his acting is a bit uneven in this film. But despite them both being in this trap for a reason, they've both done bad things. You can't really help but like them at the same time. You are on this journey with them, discovering these things at the same time as them. So you do start to care for them. And the acting, whether it's uneven or not, the writing is what makes it work and what makes them sympathetic as well, on top of the acting. Especially, again, with the end of the third act, you don't want what's happening to them to happen, despite everything else you've already heard about from beforehand. So it's really, really good writing and that was something that Lee and James had to get right because they were on a very low budget. They had to have a good script. That's what they always said when making this film. The script has to be good. And I think it is really good. There's definitely a couple of doggy moments in there where it's a bit like, eh, okay. But again, I can give it a pass because of budgetary reasons, because of location restrictions and so on and so forth. But of course, this wouldn't be a Saw film without a plot twist. And obviously, this being the first film, this has probably one of the most iconic film endings ever. It's still one of the best plot twists ever in films. And Lee Winnell's acting in those moments especially is incredible. His facial expressions are just amazing and actually quite realistic. Yeah, he that's where he really shines is like near to the end especially in sort of moments where he feels like he's being caught out like he's really really good in those moments but the plot twist especially and the scenes of him as he's realizing what's going on yeah his facial expressions are just so so good <laughs> they're incredible and don't worry i know it's going to sound weird because this is a 20 year old film now i'm actually not going to say what the plot twist is that probably might sound weird for some people, but at the same time, this is one of those films where you actually, it's better if you go into this blind and not know anything at all. You don't know the ending, just go into this completely blind and go along for the very stressful ride. But there is a reason why it's still one of the best plot twists in film, and that's because you mainly don't expect it to happen. But it makes sense once once you see what happens and actually what that actually means. It does make sense as to how that came to be. But at the same time, the moment it happens is an incredible moment. And immediately you can tell, OK, this is going to be iconic. This is going to be an iconic moment in film history. And yeah, it still is. <laughs> it still is. And Lee Winnell's acting against that is just... Mwah. <laughs> it's just amazing. Something that the cinema was able to actually highlight and make more noticeable, though, was the soundtrack. And aside from the main Saw theme, it's not really something I've noticed too much. But because of the way that the cinema in my local area has set up their speakers... The sound and the music really came to the forefront as well as the imagery. And the soundtrack is 
really really good charlie clauser has done the soundtrack on every saw film and i think it's good that he stays he has stayed consistently with the franchise because then the music has stayed consistent and that has also helped with identifying its iconography the music as well as the imagery is what makes saw saw and what makes it very easily identifiable it's not just you know like i was saying earlier it's not just the puppet it's not just the pig it's not just the traps but you know when you hear that theme tune come in you know you're going to be in for an amazing ending and even with the sounds and the music as the film is going on before that it's very recognizable and very charlie clauser but yeah saw one there's a reason that it's an iconic horror film and has taken its place in film history and that's because it's a fantastic film it was made on a low budget the behind the scenes and the making of each saw film is very very interesting in terms of its practical effects and also the editing and transitions and yeah it's a fan yeah like i was saying it's a fantastic film I'm really glad I got to experience it finally in the cinema for the 20th anniversary. I cannot believe it's 20 years old. <laughs> but yeah. Hopefully Saw 2 next year for cinemas. Hopefully. But I was Megan. This is Battle Royale the Cheese. Happy Halloween. <laughs>